let's talk about something totally different today. Let's talk about marine propulsion, especially diesel propulsion, electric propulsion, diesel electric propulsion, uh, I don't know how to make that sound, and hybrid propulsion. Okay, <clears throat> I want to have a look at diesel propulsion, electric propulsion, yeah, with some kind of lithium batteries, of course, diesel electric propulsion, and hybrid propulsion. That would include, of course, a battery like electric propulsion and a diesel generator like diesel electric propulsion. And for these four kinds of marine propulsion systems, I want to look at the system weight, the system endurance in time, how long can you run the system under full power, for example, and of course, uh, some other pros and cons. And I want to do that using an example where we have 10 kilowatts or 14 horsepowers at the propellers. So uh, yeah, a rather small propulsion system. And please note, larger propulsion systems, uh, for example, yeah, the two-story high, 12-cylinder, <laughs> two-stroke diesel engine, uh, gulping heavy oil in a container freighter is much more efficient than a 14 horsepower two cylinder four stroke micro diesel engine. I will not talk about turbines, gas, or otherwise, nuclear power, which normally includes some kind of steam turbines or gasoline engines. I mean, <laughs> If you clamp two, three, or four 150 horsepower gasoline outboards on your transom, uh, any discussions about efficiency are moot. Let's start with the propulsion system we all know and love, the diesel engine. <coughs> Sorry. As I mentioned, I want to have at full ahead 10 kilowatts at the prop. And usually these smaller engines, because they run quite fast, uh, fast in the marine context, so with 3000 to 3600 RPM, uh, the shaft is connected via a reduction gearbox to the engine. These uh, reduction gearboxes are really simple affairs. If you go ahead, it's usually just, uh, you know, two gears mashing, giving you a reduction of one to two to one to three. And this can be built very efficiently, let's say uh, 99%. So to get our 10 kilowatts here at the prop, we need 10.1 kilowatt out of the engine. Again, at full ahead. And at full ahead, uh, such an engine would burn 3.5 liters per hour or 290 grams per kilowatt hour. That latter number is quite easy to calculate from the consumption in liters per hour, which is usually given by the engine manufacturer. You simply take the, uh, in our case, 3.5 liters per hour, Multiply that by the density of diesel, so 0.83 kilograms per liter, and divide that by the power for one hour, so 10.1 kilowatt hours. By the way, to get to these numbers, I kind of took the average across these three popular ma small marine engines, the Beta Marine 14, the Nani N2.14, and the Yanma 2YM15. And the endurance, that's equally trivial. We just divide our, either, yeah, depends on <laughs> your preferences, our 100 kilograms uh, by 290 grams per kilowatt hours times 10.1 kilowatts, or we divide our 120 liters by 3.5 liters per hour, and that gives us about 
34 hours endurance. And of course, we need a diesel tank. In our example here, 120 liters holding 100 kilograms of diesel fuel. We already talked about the density of diesel fuel. The tank itself has also some weight, 10 kilograms if it's made out of plastic. So yeah, we have here a total weight of 110 kilograms. The diesel engines here on average with the gear and oil and everything come to 120 kilograms. Of course, the shaft and the prop also has some weight, a small shaft, 25 millimeter diameter, half a meter long, small prop, maybe 10 kilograms. And that gives us a total system weight of 240 kilograms. Next, electric propulsion. Whee! <clears throat> Again, we want to have 10 kilowatts here at the prop. And I'm aware that many vendors, especially of smaller marine electric motors, make claims that, for example here, 10 kilowatts electric at the prop is equivalent to a much higher power from an internal combustion engine at the prop. And there kind of is something to that claim when it comes to slow speed. So the boat moving very slow or the engine running very slow. Reason being, torque. Electric motors produce at lower RPMs a much higher torque than diesel engines or other internal combustion engines. However, at full throttle, and we're talking about full throttle here, uh, there is absolutely no difference if you have the 10 kilowatts at the prop from an electric motor or from a diesel engine. The electric motor I'm using in this example is the Aquamod A100E and it's an outboarder. So it has already the shaft and the prop integrated. So we have a slight weight advantage compared to our diesel propulsion example. However, there are no 10 kilowatt outboard diesels available on the market. So we have to live with that. Anyway, that motor needs 10.9 kilowatts input power to produce 10 kilowatts at the prop full throttle. So it has an efficiency of 92%. Remember, I said the bigger the motors, the higher the efficiency. That's true for electric motors too. So very large electric motors can have efficiencies up to 98%. Instead of a diesel tank, we have of course batteries. And in the context of marine applications, these are almost always life apo for batteries. The reason being, these things behave relatively benign when they are mechanically damaged, like yeah, stepping them with a metal bar. They huff and puff a little bit, but that's it. Other lithium technologies cannot be used on ships because they might burst violently into flames. Uh, bottom line, uh, they are, will not be approved for marine application and if you are using them on your boat or your ship, you cannot get it insured. In my example, I am using the Super B Nomada 12 volt 105 amp hour battery or yeah, a multiple of them. They have for marine batteries, the whopping energy density of 7.4 kilograms per kilowatt hour. Other marine batteries, uh, still good ones, come to 10 kilograms per kilowatt hours, but you also find 12 kilograms or 15 kilograms per kilowatt hour. And again, no, you cannot compare that with the energy density of Tesla batteries. It's another technology. You cannot use it on ships. Okay. Now we have different colored numbers here. The green numbers are for the case where I try to match the system weight of the electric propulsion system to the system weight of our diesel propulsion. And the blue numbers is the case where I try to match 
the endurance of our diesel propulsion system to the electric propulsion system. So if we want a system weight of 240 kilograms, we can take aboard 196 kilograms of batteries because yeah, 240 minus 44 kilograms. So yeah, our electric motor is lighter than the diesel engine and the prop and the shaft. So yeah, we can take on more batteries than we can take on diesel. However, these 196 kilograms of batteries yield us 26 kilowatt hours. And you divide that by 10.9 kilowatts that we need here full throttle. We come to a whopping endurance of 2.4 hours. That's a bit disappointing. Well, let's have a look at the other case. To get to 34 hours endurance at full throttle 10.9 kilowatts, we need 371 kilowatt hours battery capacity, which weights in at 2745 kilograms and leads us to a total system weight of 2789 kilograms. Now, where have you seen that problem before? Electric cars? Unfortunately, it gets even worse, uh, but just a little. I have here a data sheet for an Isuzu diesel engine, a little bigger one, yeah, producing at a max about 35 horsepower. Uh, the details are not that interesting. Interesting is that Isuzu provides for that engine here a specific fuel consumption graph. Let's zoom in. They give you the specific fuel consumption in pounds per horsepower hours, and I won't convert that into the grams per kilowatt hours I use, over the whole power range. And at maximum power 35 horsepower, we consume 0.41 pounds of diesel fuel per horsepower hour. But if we reduce the power output here in the band below, yeah, about 25 horsepowers to about here uh, 20 horsepowers or so, we are just consuming 0.37 pounds per horsepower hour. That means if that is our maximum efficiency here, that is 10% better than our engine efficiency at full power. And please note, if we go below the 20 horsepower output, our efficiency is getting worse again. That's the efficiency curve of a BLDC motor you would typically find in an electric marine propulsion system. Uh, the power is not really shown here as a curve, just a speed and torque, but speed times torque is power, so the power curve would be something like that. The important thing here is up to, yeah, let's say a third of max power to max power, our efficiency is at its top level, 100% relative. And below that, it falls down to, yeah, at some point, 0%. Please note, I've shown you that graph here. If we here really go into idling mode, uh, our specific fuel consumption per horsepower hour uh, goes to uh, infinity. So efficiency also goes to zero at some point for diesel engines. Anyway, I found that uh, graph here in a publication from an Aircon at Maca. That's his speed torque and efficiency of the BLDC motor with its controller at 96 volts from his energy management of solar car in circuit race article. That means for our diesel and electric propulsion systems, if we would be cruising along at a leisurely pace, drawing only half of the max power, so 5 kilowatts, with an electric motor, we would of course double our endurance. 
With our diesel engine, we would double the endurance and then get 10%, at least in case of the Isuzu engine, on top of that. Let's talk about that weight issue here a bit more. Non-boaters watching this video might be under the impression that weight is not an issue for boats. Having those mental images of huge aircraft carriers, uh, container freighters and super tankers made out of massive steel plates in their mind. However, I venture to say that weight for boats is almost as much as important as it is for planes. If a plane is too heavy, it doesn't fly. If a boat is too heavy, it doesn't float. <laughs> uh, to give you some perspective here, such a 10 kilowatt engine would be typically used as an auxiliary engine in a sailing boat weighing up to four tons. If you add to that boat another two and a half tons, it sinks. The only way to prevent that is to make the boat bigger so it has more volume. However, if you make the boat bigger, you normally need more power to get up to the same speed. And if you have more power, you need more batteries to get the same <laughs> endurance. It's easier with cars. If you add half a ton of batteries to a middle class car, you can get away with that by just strengthening the structure a little bit, the suspension, the brakes and maybe the steering and you're done. From the outside it still looks like the same car. But enough with the electric propulsion bashing. Electric propulsion also has advantages compared to diesel propulsion. And we can start by <laughs> looking at the weight again, which might not be that big an issue for some boats. Some sailing boats carry in their very pronounced keels lead ballast. Let's replace that, yeah, if space allows it, with batteries. The same is true for other boats. Not all boats carry ballast here in their hull but some do, and there we can replace the ballast with batteries. There's of course that one trick only electric propulsion can do, recuperation. If you're not using your motor for propulsion, you can use it to generate electricity and recharge your batteries. However, curb your expectations. These electric engines are optimized as motors, not as generators. And the same holds true for your prop. So, for example, if these 10 kilowatts can propel you ahead at 10 knots, and now you are under sail, sailing along with 10 knots and using that as a generator, you won't get 10 kilowatts out of here to recharge your batteries. Maybe you get out 5 kilowatts or even less. I don't know, because vendors of electric propulsion systems that offer recuperation are a bit tight-lipped <laughs> when it comes to hard data, how good that really works. Anyway, there are more advantages to electric propulsion. An electric motor is easier to handle. You just have one power throttle and that is, yeah, a stop, full ahead or full astern. With a diesel engine you normally have two levers, yeah, one is the throttle, so full or stop, and the other is neutral, ahead and astern. So if you go from full ahead to full astern, you normally have to go, yeah, to uh, stop, then neutral, then a stern, and then you can go to full again. And if you don't do that in <laughs> the right way, uh, you will hear it in the gearbox. An electric propulsion system is much easier to maintain than a diesel propulsion system. 
I mean, you basically have no maintenance for, yeah, maybe <laughs> exchanging your sacrificial zinc anode here at the screw somewhere. Uh, but that's the same for the diesel propulsion. But for diesel engine, you have to change uh, the engine oil, sometimes the gear oil, the oil filters, uh, etc. It's, it's work to keep that thing running. And of course, your electric motor is quiet and doesn't stink like your diesel engine. Your electric motor is small compared to your diesel engine and all you need to get it running is a cable to the battery. Okay, in some cases with larger motors you also need some cooling water, but uh, that aside you can place it anywhere. You can use it as an outboarder or classical inboarder with a shaft or you can put it anywhere on the hole in a pot below. There are also pots available that you can turn for steering the boat. Um, your diesel engine is large, it always needs a cooling inlet, you have to take care of the exhaust and uh, it's possible to go away from the classical simple gearbox and shaft configuration to something called a Z drive. I think Volvo is selling really ex interesting solutions there where the power is basically transmitted like that and you can also turn the pot here but you're no longer talking about 99% efficiency for such a complicated gearbox. Volvo claims anyway that their solution is more efficient than this classic solution. It probably is, who knows. Anyway, uh, the batteries for your electric drive, you can stack them and place them anywhere you like. You just need to run cable. Uh, you can build, of course, custom diesel tanks, but mm, yeah, uh, or have several diesel tanks with piping and stuff and pumps, but it's not as easy as stacking and connecting batteries. Let's not forget, charging your batteries is probably much cheaper than filling up your diesel tank. Talking about costs, one more drawback of the electric propulsion, buying it. The numbers I'll throw around here are all in euros, including German tax. So the Acromod A100e will set you back over 9,000 euros. You get a Yanma 2YM15 or Better Marine 14, including the shaft assembly and the prop, for about six to seven thousand. The Nani N214 is a little bit more expensive, including everything. You will have to shell out eight to nine thousand. So we are approaching here the cost of the electric motor. Compared to all that, you get the diesel tank for next to nothing, a few hundred bucks. The Super B Nomada will set you back 1300 per kilowatt hour. You do the math. You get cheaper batteries as low as 600 per kilowatt hour, but these have abysmal energy densities here, yeah, like 1500 kilograms per kilowatt hour. So we would double our system weight again. Of course, there are offerings in between. Bottom line, the initial investment for electric propulsion is quite high. Whoa, that was quite some ground to cover, but we made it. And that shall be enough for this video. So we had a look at the diesel propulsion and the electric propulsion with an in-depth discussion. In part two, there will be a card here as soon as it's available and link in the description uh, in one or two weeks or so. Uh, we will talk about diesel electric propulsion and hybrid propulsion. And that should go a lot faster because these are just combining elements from diesel and electric propulsion. In addition, I will add two little segments about lead acid gel A. AGM batteries and solar. Then we should be able to make a proper summary and maybe we can even draw some conclusions. Till then, 
Bye.